This would be Tuesday, November 24th, as we get ready to finish our story of the lottery and get into the information from there. We do have the book report coming up due soon. Yes, I did put a random number up there to see which kids paid attention. Good job. It was 16, I think it's like 15. It's due two weeks from tomorrow, so I think it's like 15 days. But I figured I'd just put a random number up there to see how many kids paid attention. The answer is not very many of you. With our story, with the lottery, there's an example of a lottery. Uh, let's see. When, when is our story taking place? What day? Uh, July 7th. I don't know. July 27th. No. July 27th. June 27th. June 27th. June 27th. Uh, what time of day is it? Morning, morning. afternoon, morning. night? Morning. 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 And where is it taking place? In a village. How big is the village? Nice, right, so done. Is this the only town that does the lottery? No. no. How long have they been doing it? Long, 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 long time. And do they know why they do it? No. no. Why do they keep doing it? Because they're like money. So what do you call that? Tradition. Tradition. So they keep passing it down because of tradition. What device do we use for our lottery? A box. A box. A box. A box. A box. Black box. And then what's in our box? Paper. The fact that we have paper. Trees. Um, did we always use paper? No, no. Yeah. Like wood. We used to use the chunks of wood. But then the town has gotten so big that now we're using the pieces of paper. And let's see, so we have the paper then. So with you guys, where did we get a chance to stop? We got a chance to stop there. Uh, let's see, and they come running up, and Tessie comes is the last person who comes running up to the town square when they're getting ready to go through and do everything. Does everyone get to play the game? No. Play the lottery? No. no. Who does get to you play the lottery? The men. The men folk. Let's see. And oh, if you have no man folk in the family to do it, then who gets to do it? Your son. Then that's when the oldest son does it. I think they have to be like 18 or something like that. Mm -hmm. If you don't have an oldest son, then who's the next one? The mom. There you go. So it goes the oldest person, then it goes to the man folk, then it goes to the uh, wife. Mr. Brobiak, what if there's no father and no mother? Then you don't have a family. You're an <laughs> orphan. In that case, you'd probably have to go be somewhere else. And so let's say I think that takes us up to there. Law! Okay, well, they used to use wood, but technically they still are using wood. Because right, that's why I had to call on you before. So now, to keep going from their glary face, with the story we got, the fact they're getting ready to start, have people go through and come up and grab the little old pieces of wood that are now flat pieces of wood and go from there. Let's see. I think that covers most of the fun things. Make sure we're not getting anything else confused. It comes running. And yeah, we're good to go. Wait, where are we? Are? On the second page, second column, uh, where it says the people have done it so many times. Now they're ready for people to come. Oh, the attitude. Are people excited, nervous, excited. bored, happy, happy, sad? Anxious. Um, happy. happy. Excited happy. and nervous. Yes. Stop. Can you no. stop? You did. Trust me. Nervous Excited, excited nervous, nervous, happy. Nervous All right. Oh, Neutral. is Anxious. the lottery, is this lottery a good thing or a bad thing? Good, good thing. thing. All right, just checking to make sure we're keeping on top of things. All right. The people had done it so many times that they only half listened to the directions. Most of them were quiet, wetting their lips, not looking around. Then Mr. Summers raised one hand high and said, Adams! A man disengaged himself from the crowd and came forward. Hi, Steve, Mr. Summers said. Mr. Adams said, Hi, Joe. They grinned at one another humorlessly, nervously. Then Mr. Adams reached into the black box and took out a folded paper. He held it firmly by one corner as he turned and went hastily back to his place in the crowd, where he stood a little apart from his family, not looking down at his hand. Allen, Mr. Summers said. Anderson! Bentham! By the way, what's he doing? He's going Alan Anderson, Bentham, Adams. Calling people people up. Alphabetical order. Yeah, he's just calling people up through alphabetical order to come up and then grab the little paper from the box to find out who wins. Seems like there's no time at all between lotteries anymore, Mrs. Delacroix said and Mrs. Graves in the back row. Seems like we got through with the last one only last week. Time sure goes fast, Mrs. Graves said. Clark! Delacroix! There goes my old man, Mrs. Delacroix said. She held her breath while her husband went forward. Dunbar! Mr. Summers said. Mrs. Dunbar went steadily to the box while one of the women said, Go on, Janie! Another said, There she goes! We're next, Mrs. Graves said. 
and she watched while Mr. Graves came around from the side of the box, greeted Mr. Summers gravely, and selected a slip of paper from the box. By now, all through the crowd, there were men holding the small folded papers in their large hands, turning them over and over nervously. Mrs. Dunbar and her two sons stood together, Mrs. Dunbar holding a slip of paper. Harvard? Hutchinson? Get up there, Bill, Mrs. Hutchinson said. The people near her laughed. Jones! They do say, Mr. Adams said to old man Warner, who stood next to him, that over in the North Village, well, they're talking of giving up the lottery. Old man Warner snorted. Yeah, pack of crazy fools, listen to the young folks. Nothing's good enough for them. Next thing you know, they really want to go back to living in caves. Nobody not work anymore. Live that way for a while. Used to be a saying about lottery in June, corn be heavy soon. First thing you know, we'd all be eating stewed chickweed and acorns. There's always been a lottery, he added petulantly. Bad enough to see young Joe Summers up there joking with everybody. Some places have already quit lotteries, Mrs. Adams said. Enough but trouble in that, old man Warner said stoutly. Pack of young fools. Martin? And Bobby Martin watched his father go forward. Overdyke? Percy? Oh, I wish they'd hurry, Mrs. Dunbar said to her older son. I wish they'd hurry. They're almost through, her son said. Well, you get ready to run till Dad, Mrs. Dunbar said. Mr. Summers called his own name and then stepped forward precisely, selected a slip from the box. Then he called, Warner? 77th year I've been in the lottery, old man Warner said as he went through the crowd. 77th time! Watson! The tall boy came awkwardly through the crowd. Someone said, Don't be nervous, Jack. And Mr. Summers said, Take your time, son. Zanini! After that, there was a long pause, a breathless pause, until Mr. Summers, holding his slip of paper in the air, said, All right, fellas. For a minute, no one moved, and then all the slips of paper were opened. Suddenly, all the women began to speak at once, saying, who is it? Who's got it? Is it the Dunbars? Is it the Watsons? Then the voices began to say, It's Hutchinson. It's Bill. Bill Hutchinson's got it. Go tell your father, Mrs. Dunbar said to her older son. People began to look around to see the Hutchinsons. Bill Hutchinson was standing quietly, staring down at the paper in his hand. Suddenly, Tessie Hutchinson shouted to Mr. Summers, You didn't give him time enough to take any paper he wanted. I saw you. It wasn't fair. And that's where part one ends. And we'll go to part two here in just a moment. Can I download it real quick? Um, if you want to. Um, with this, we now find out who uh, wins the lottery. And who wins the lottery? Bill Hutchinson. Bill Hutchinson wins the lottery. How does his wife react to their winning? Mad. Mad. I don't know why. She's mad because she, they think they cheated because he said he didn't give him enough time. All right. So she definitely seems mad and thinks that cheating was going on because... He did not have enough time. Yeah? But, Dylan, that doesn't make sense because his <laughs> wife said that, and she should, like, wouldn't she be happy? You would think, think so. It? It's a little confusing. Yeah, I because would, then I would she's agree. like, she's, she didn't give him enough time. Like, wait, what? So, what do you think this indicates then? Or do we have any yeah. clues yet? Yeah, lottery. Vanessa? Yeah, that might to All right. Oh, maybe. Law? Maybe they have to lose money. Could be. Could be losing. You're saying something bad, and you went specifically to losing money, Dakota. I know where part two is. Oh, do you? Yeah. Nice. Where is it? Um, Google. Yes, Google. Um, Google is, we're going to find out that we do have a winning family, which was Bill Hutchinson. Now they're going to do the whole lottery again, but a smaller version of it, because that was just to find which family won. And now they're going to do it a second time to find a more specific thing. And so as we go to this next part, you have to figure out why they're doing the lottery at the second time. Wait, wait. You'll figure it out. The second part start. Be a good sport, Tessie, Mrs. Delacroix called. And Mrs. Graves said, all of us took the same chance. Shut up, Tessie, Bill Hutchinson said. Well, everyone, Mr. Summers said, that was done pretty fast. Now we've got to be hurrying a little more to get done in time. He consulted his next list. Bill, you drew for the Hutchinson family. You got any other households in the Hutchinsons? There's Don and Eva, 
Mrs. Hutchinson yelled. Uh, make them take their chance. Daughters draw with their husbands' families, Tessie, Mr. Summers said gently. You know that as well as anyone else. It wasn't fair, Tessie said. Well, I guess not, Joe, Bill Hutchinson said regretfully. My husband draws with her husband's family. That's only fair. I've got no other family except the kids. Then, as far as drawing for families is concerned, it is you, Mr. Summers said in explanation. And as far as drawing for households is concerned, that's you too, right? Right, Bill Hutchinson said. How many kids, Bill? Mr. Summers asked formally. Three. There's Bill Jr., Nancy, uh, little Dave, and then just Tessie and me. All right, then. Harry, you got their tickets back? Mr. Graves nodded and held up the slips of paper. Put them in the box, then, Mr. Summers directed. Take bills, put it in. Well, I think we ought to start over, Mrs. Hutchinson said as quietly as she could. I tell you, it wasn't fair. You, you didn't give them time enough to choose. Everybody saw that. Mr. Graves had selected the five slips and put them in the box, and he dropped all the papers but those onto the ground, where the breeze caught them and lifted them off. Listen, listen, everybody, Mrs. Hutchinson was saying to the people around her. You ready, Bill? Mr. Summers asked. And Bill Hutchinson, with one quick glance around at his wife and children, he nodded. All right, quick pause. So we're doing the lottery for a second round. The first time was just to find out what family won. Now, why are they doing it again? See what household one. See which household one. Close. Um, see see what family, family one. See what? Family. We know what family person. one. Well, no, what? Uh, what? Person. What? Person. what person in the family won? And so now, because how many people are in the family? Five. 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 Because 300 people in town is going to take a long time for each one of the 300 to come up. So instead, they say, let's just find a winning family. Now you have, like, I don't know, 50 families or 60 families. That's a lot fewer. Once you find your winning family, you do it a second time to figure out what person in the family won. But what are they winning? That's what we're getting ready to find out. Oh. So now Money. they're going to have each person in the family come up to figure out who in the family has won. One, one. Call bar. I found part two. Good job. I'm already reading it. Remember, Mr. Summers said, take the slips and keep them folded until each person has taken one. Harry, you help little Davy. Mr. Graves took the hand of the little boy who came willingly with him up to the box. Take a paper of the box, Davy, Mr. Summers said. Davy put his hand into the box and laughed. No, no, take just one paper, Mr. Summers said. Harry, you hold it for him. Mr. Graves took the child's hand and removed the folded paper from the tight fist and held it while little Dave stood next to him and looked up at him wonderingly. Nancy next, Mr. Summers said. Nancy was twelve, and her school friends breathed heavily as she went forward, switching her skirt, and took a slip daintily from the box. Bill Jr., Mr. Summers said, and Billy, his face red and his feet over large, near knocked the box over as he got a paper out. Tessie, Mr. Summers said. She hesitated for a minute, looking around defiantly, and then set her lips and went up to the box. She snatched a paper out and held it behind her. Bill, Mr. Summers said. Bill Hutchinson reached into the box and felt around, bringing his hand out at last with a slip of paper in it. The crowd was quiet. A girl whispered, I hope it's not Nancy. And the sound of the whisper reached the edges of the crowd. It's not the way it used to be, Old Man Warner said clearly. People ain't the way they used to be. All right, Mr. Summers said. Open the papers. Harry, you open little Davies. Mr. Graves opened some of the paper. There was a general sigh through the crowd as he held it up, and everyone could see that it was blank. Nancy and Bill Jr. opened theirs at the same time. Both beamed and laughed, turning around to the crowd and holding their slips of paper above their heads. Tessie, Mr. Summers said. There was a pause, and then Mr. Summers looked at Bill Hutchinson, and Bill unfolded his paper and showed it. It was blank. It's Tessie, oh. Mr. Summers said. His voice was now hushed. Show us your paper, Bill. Bill Hutchinson went over to his wife and forced the slip of paper out of her hand. It had a black spot on it. The black spot Mr. Summers had made the night before with a heavy pencil in the coal company office. Bill Hutchinson held it up, and there was a stir in the crowd. All right, folks, Mr. 
summer said. Let's finish quickly. Although the villagers had forgotten the ritual and lost the original black box, they still remembered to use stones. The pile of stones the boys had made earlier was ready. There were stones on the ground with the blowing scraps of paper that had come out of the box. Mrs. Delacroix selected a stone so large she had to pick it up with both hands and turn to Mrs. Dunbar. Come on, she said. Hurry up! Mrs. Dunbar had small stones in both hands, and she said, gasping for breath, I can't run at all. You have to go ahead. I'll catch up with you. The children had stones already, and someone gave little Davy Hutchinson a few pebbles. Tessie Hutchinson was in the center of a cleared space by now, and she held her hands out desperately as the villagers moved in on her. It isn't fair, she said. The stone hit her on the side of the head. Mm. Old man Warner was saying, Come on! Come on, everyone! Steve Adams was in the front of the crowd of villagers, with Mrs. Graves beside him. It isn't fair! It isn't right! Mrs. Hutchinson screamed, and then they were upon her. And that's where it ends. Why would you read this to us? Oh, my For so God. many yes, reasons. Um, for one, for those of you who are wanting the second part of it, it is on my website. It's just not labeled as part two. If you scroll down right above the old boy world, it's just the one that's the little dot that's on there. One, don't tell other kids how my story ends. I want them to get that same unhappy feeling that goes into it. Unfortunately, we didn't finish with as much time as I wanted to go through and talk about it. There's a lot of reasons why I like this story. Oh, Mr. Broly, I it's so disturbing. It's supposed to be. It's a story that's supposed to make you think. Um, the thinking being, why does this town keep doing it? Population population down. Down. Good, that's usually the first guess, to keep the population down, but at the very beginning it talks about the fact that huge cities are doing it, and the huge cities, I mean, it takes them two days. But why? It's a tradition. Tradition. This is something that gets handed down. The idea being is that not all traditions are good traditions. Some traditions you need to question. Don't do things because everyone else is doing them. Have you heard the phrase, um, oh, what is it? Uh, everything that's popular is not right, and everything that's right is not always popular. So here, the lottery is very popular. Is it right? No. Oh, no. Oh, my God. With the story, she wrote it because she said it was based on real life, on stories that she saw happening. The problem is, it's a metaphor. The way this works as a metaphor, what makes Tessie different from everyone else? She said she's not there. She got the card. She got the What's on it? The black spot. Everyone turns on her because of this black spot. Because tradition has told them, whoever gets that black spot, you have to treat differently and be mean to. That you have to essentially kill. Take this black dot and expand that. So it's no longer on the card. It covers their skin. And everyone turns on them because of that. What is it? Racism. Racism. Racism is not something that you were born with. Where does racism come from? Parents. Where do your parents Tradition. get it from? Their parents. So racism is a form of... Tradition. And it's the idea that she was trying to bring attention to this, that people would react to it, say how horrible it was, when she said, realize it's going on right now. This is happening all over the place. As soon as you turn on someone because of the color of their skin or you turn on someone because one small thing makes them different, it's the exact same thing as what's happening in this story. So the idea of thinking before you act. When you see everyone going and attacking one person, and this doesn't have to be just racism, although I like it for that particular metaphor. At the junior high level, when friends turn on friends, when you guys throw stones, it's not with rocks you find on the ground. It's when you guys turn on each other and you're posting tweets and you're posting pictures to Instagram and you guys are mean through social media. When all of a sudden one kid is designated as the person that has the black spot and all the people turn against them, it's the exact same idea. In the story, do her friends refuse to attack her? No. Oh, heck no. They're in the front of the line. Does every town do the lottery? And they mentioned that too, the fact that you can break tradition. You can go against what everyone else thinks is the right thing. If you don't agree with it, you can fight it. That's why I like this story. It's to make you think. That was deep.